And joining me now is Nakuru Senator Susan Keheka, who has become a lone voice on the issue. She's speaking to us from Nakuru County. Uh, good evening, Senator, and thank you for joining us. Why are you the only area leader who is still talking about this? I mean, MCAs, area MPs, and the governor have all gone silent. Well, thank you, Anne, for having me. Uh, unfortunately, I think that uh, whether others are talking or not, I have a duty and a responsibility to keep speaking on behalf of those who cannot speak. Uh, I feel that when they woke up and voted for me, and some have probably passed on who voted for me, uh, may they rest in peace, they expected me to speak for them and represent them, especially when they are not able to represent themselves. So that is why I continue to speak. I also believe that was such a huge tragedy. When you have over 47 people dead, we cannot, it's not just a number, and we cannot just wish that away. So I continue to speak on behalf of those who cannot speak for themselves. And even if I am a minority of one, I will continue speaking. Well, you are expected to uh, petition the Senate tomorrow to take some action on this matter. What exactly do you want them to do? Actually, what I'm doing tomorrow is bringing a motion. Actually, maybe not tomorrow. It might be Wednesday by the time we get to it. Uh, is bringing a motion to get a select committee in the Senate that will uh, continue or will go ahead and do a complete and holistic uh, investigation into what went wrong. Uh, in addition to that, if, into, if anybody, in, uh, whether an individual or a government agency was culpable, and also in terms of what needs to be done as far as compensation for those victims who passed on or for those who are displaced, because we have hundreds of families who have since been displaced. We have some who have nowhere to live right now and are just destitute. So it's, it's uh, an investigation that will help us get to the bottom of what happened, what needs to be done, and how we mitigate to make sure that this sort of uh, disaster does not happen in the future. How does that differ with what the Defense Committee has already done? What the Defense Committee, which I'm a member of, did is uh, they went out on the ground on that first, uh, the, the first few days, and they were able to do a, a fact-finding mission as to uh, determine what happened and what, uh, as far as what the responses from the national government as, as well as the county government, what kind of help they were able to offer during that disaster and how quickly or not they responded. So that they were able to done, to, uh, they were able to do. But what this select committee will do is really get down more thoroughly also make sure that uh, they have invited the different agencies to come to the to come in front of the committee so that the committee can determine if the regulatory bodies did what they were supposed to do were the licensing was the licensing done properly uh, was there a follow up was the dam properly maintained and that sort of stuff so it's going to be very holistic from this uh, select committee um, we have seen you in the story that has just aired um, quite uh, perplexed at the fact that uh, Mr. Patel is still walking free. Um, do you believe that there is an issue of criminality in this matter? Well, and um, what I think is we must do a thorough investigation. Uh, as much as we are saying that, uh, I, I know I've had some quarters quickly say it was an accident, fine, it could have been, but at the same time you have uh, this Mr. Patel who's uh, farm is where these dams are. These dams were built upstream and the populations or the settlements are downstream. So when what you have on your farm uh, then uh, escapes, which in this case is the water, and it causes damage, and this time you're talking about death of almost 50 people, then I believe even if it's not criminal culpability, there is strict liability there. So that is what we need to pursue, we need to determine, and then after that, then obviously is the uh, issue of compensation for these victims from Mr. Patel himself, as well as uh, the government. Um, w when I visited the area, it was very clear from area residents that um, his uh, investment in the region has been a kind of lifeline for them. It is the, the most significant economic investment that they've seen. And there was a sense that their fate is intertwined, that uh, if he goes down, so too does the community. Would you agree? 
that's 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 a point that has come uh, that has been brought forth quite a bit since this incident happened or this disaster happened and obviously we appreciate that he's one of the largest employers in that area so Bukia as well as Nakuru County in general is one area that has a lot of settlements with those large farms that provide employment for their people so as much as we appreciate that he must also if he's culpable be then be held liable because as much as you're providing employment you also have have to do things right and do them within the law and we are not saying or nobody is saying that he should be brought down that is not even where we are going where we are going is you must take responsibility if you're responsible for the loss of these lives or for the loss of this property and that's where we're going um, so yes he has uh, done some uh, he has offered a lot of employment some uh, corporate social responsibility but at the same time there has also been some issues when you we visited the dam as the defense uh, of the security committee we were able to see that there were two rivers in that property that um, had been blocked by the dams. So now you have a situation where the rivers are blocked, so people downstream in the settlements are not able to get water, and then you turn around and provide them some dam water every now and then. So on one hand, yes, there is, uh, there is some help you're providing, but on the other hand, you're hurting the population because they are unable to get what is naturally theirs. So there is a problem. All right, we'll be following up this story. Thank you for speaking to us this evening, Suzanne Kiheka, the Nakuru Senator. We're taking a short break. We're back with your views after this.